Hello everyone and welcome back. As you can see from the thumbnail, the question here is whether or not this tooth needs a crown. So 70 year old patient, lovely lady came in, really doesn't have that much restorative history. You can see a couple things here and there, but she said she's mostly been going for cleanings and has this deep class five filling. Now that amalgam that's on top of there has been there since she was probably a kid, still looks great. And so the question is whether or not we need to do a crown on top of here. So I'll Right now, I'll have you ask and say, what do you think? Do you think this tooth needs a crown? Answer down in the comments. And I think I actually put a poll out as well as whether or not you think it needs a crown. So when dealing with class fives, what I do, a couple different things here. First is you do need to have that rubber dam down a little bit lower. So I'm on the gingiva here just slightly. They do make rubber dams that work for sub G, but in general, this one was a little bit farther. And I don't think the ones with the teeth that drop down a little bit would work very well. I always try to do the entire root canal from the buckle if possible, but if I can't even get my 8C in, I need to go for a little more straight line. So I'm gonna use the EG3 to drop down, having a little bit of trouble here with that air hand piece. So what do we do? We get a little more power. Can I get a more power, baby? A more power, baby! <laughs> and so what we're doing here is taking the electric hand piece, that dropped down beautifully. And then I'd like to introduce a new file. We have a skinny workhorse here. So I've started to switch from a 014 to a 012. It's not that much of a difference. Um, and here, by the way, is what AI thinks a skinny workhorse looks like as opposed to our normal one. So a little bit smaller, as you can see. And with that direct line of access here, we're able to drop down nicely. So as far as the root canal, it's pretty straightforward here. Um, I do like having this straight line access for these cases. Sometimes, like I said, I'll do it from the buckle if I'm able to get in there. But in this case, I'm going to be placing a post inside here. This tooth is going to fail because of one of two reasons. The first is decay. If we have recurrent decay on here and we'll do our normal bonding process as we talked about, as I've shown in the past. Uh, what happened here, she started a new medication, started to get some dry mouth, had a little bit of recession. So we've already talked about maybe doing some SDF on the posterior teeth that are exposed as well as using a high fluoride toothpaste to help kind of protect those teeth moving forward. And the other way this tooth is going to fail is a snap off failure. When you lose that tooth structure right along that class five area, that is a key stress concentration point. And these teeth are much more likely to have a snap off failure where the tooth literally snaps off at the gun line. So one of the ways we prevent that is by putting a post inside here. And by having my axis run right through the long axis of the tooth, that post will help resist that snap off failure. That's why I do posts on so many teeth. It's not to retain the core, it's to help protect it from snap-off failure. You'll see my uh, endo activator had a little bit of a bend in that tip there too. Well, not quite able to get inside there, so what you do is you flip it around 180 degrees, flip that bend back, and now it drops in very nicely. So if you're ever in the same situation and can't get an instrument in, bend it back towards the lingual or palatal if it's on the maxilla and much easier. Isopropyl alcohol, clean everything out, looks nice and dry, and we're gonna get ready squirt fill for this just like normal. Uh, nothing too, too crazy about this tooth from a root canal standpoint. The question is whether or not you think it needs a crown. So if you haven't already, drop a comment below. What do you think? Would you put a crown on top of this? Would you not? General Dennis, please shout out as well. I'd love to hear your input here because you'd be the one who were actually doing this. Um, as far as the rest of the tooth, it's pretty much straightforward. I'm gonna use a squirt technique here. I'm planning on doing the post here. So when I do the squirt technique, I'm only placing a small amount and I'm trying to keep it out of my coronal part of the access so I don't have gutta percha sticking around inside there. So what we're gonna do now is clean it out. I did forget to do that top part, so I'm gonna go back in with the isopropyl alcohol just to make sure we get all that sealer out of there. And now I'm gonna use the PacMac. So once you start to get used to using the PacMac, one of the cool things you can do is based on how you brush it and how you push it in and out of the tooth, you can actually remove gutta percha with it as well. And in this case, I was able to create the post space using the PacMac. So I got my con condensation of the gutta percha as well well as created a nice space. I'd like to also introduce a new post here, which is our unicorn, or as my team calls it, the unicorn. Um, this is what AI thought a unicorn would look like. Um, that's pretty stinking metal for me. <laughs> so I, I do like that the fiber post has a very metal object to it. So you'll probably see that I, I didn't want this channel to become a horse channel, but somehow it's become a horse channel. Um, I, I, I don't know how that happened, but I appreciate all of you for coming along with my insanity. All right, we're going to do the restoration of the tooth now. I did drop down a little bit farther when we took the... Um, when we took the check film to see where everything was, she had a really big coughing fit and the rubber dam went flying and it was just, it was just real fun. <laughs> so I had to completely change new rubber dam here, come back in. And I did 
what I ended up doing here is dropping even farther down. So I'm on unattached ginger right now, which I don't love being on. It will heal up. It's just, it's not as resilient as the attached gingiva. And I was trying to more than remove gum tissue. I was trying to just push it back and also cauterize it using the alpha tip there. That's what you're seeing. Using a little bit of ferric sulfate here to just help control bleeding as well, because class fives are notorious. If you cannot get good isolation, they're going to fail your there's structural reasons for that. The dentin is kind of garbage in that area. There's uh, physical reasons for that, that that force concentrates inside there. So I try to over-engineer whatever restoration I'm making, especially with class fives, because the failure rate is so much higher. Using the blaster just like normal, cleaning off everything. And you'll see I'm going along the outside as well, even though there wasn't that too, too much uh, biofilm in that area. I did go a little bit more onto the root surface because I'm going to try to cover a little, you'll see in a sec, I try to cover a little bit more than normal with that. So that's what it looks like when it's all cleaned out, which looks pretty darn clean in my opinion here. The, the gum tissue will heal back up. That's the occlusal. So kept it very, very, very tiny. That's why these new unicorn posts are so nice. They're actually accessory fiber posts from Ultra Dent. That's why it's unicorn is why they call them that. But my team likes calling them unicorn, unicorn instead. <laughs> and with these, they're an 0440. Uh, so a little bit smaller than the Brassler ones that I've used in the past. Those are 50s. And they seem to fit these VT shapes a lot better than the larger ones do. So I, I found that I'm using these more and more on really, really skinny cases. Um, putting it through there, you'll notice I did the occlusal part first. And then I come back in and clear up on the buckle as well. After this, we're going to use the Glick just to help start shaping things. I want to try to minimize how much prep I have to do here, just in general. And you can see the class size looking pretty good. No leakage, no issues with the gingiva. One thing that helps when you have the clamp on the gingiva itself is it actually helps to create... Um, not cauterization, why am I? Hemostasis as well. You have pressure hemostasis from that. I, my words are not working right now. I'm, this is, I'm recording this on the morning on my day off and uh, I have not had my first cup of coffee yet, so I do apologize. <laughs> but gonna go ahead and polish this up using that skinny workhorse here. Um, nothing too, too crazy. I, I probably could have polished it here. I wasn't sure whether or not the dentist was going to do a crown on top of here, so I left it a little bit rough. Um, you know, if I, looking back on it, probably should have used a polisher just to in case this was going to be the final restoration. But that's what it looks like there. So pretty traditional class five. The gum tissue should heal up nicely. There's the occlusal. There's the amalgam that we talked about. And so the question really is, would you put a crown on this tooth? What benefit are you going to get if you do put a crown? And what's the downside? Um, in my opinion here, if this were my tooth, uh, I would be fine to just let it roll and see if we can get away with it. Anyway, quick one for y'all here. Please drop a comment below as what you do in this case. I appreciate all of you. Like and subscribe and do all that fun stuff. And I will talk to you all next time.